SpaceX aims to launch Starship for the third time this month. For this to happen, as the company said, the hardware must be ready by January and the FAA must issue the license by February. However, with the current updates, is that target launch date possible? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. First of all, let's address the elephant in the room, Elon Musk and his timeline. Can't help but say that, unlike his talent and his rich, this guy, well, is pretty bad at predicting timelines. Musk also acknowledged that he's often optimistic regarding time, a tongue-in-cheek reference to his earlier delivery promises that came up short. For example, the Cybertruck was originally slated for delivery in 2021, but it finally rolled out late last year. Another example is Starship. Remember the explosion on OLM in April 2023? The damage on the launch mount is not minor, but Elon still tried to soothe the fans' broken hearts by saying, learned a lot for next test launch in a few months. In fact, we had to wait seven months in total to witness Starship's flight too. To be fair, this delay is partly due to the slow approval of launch permits. But if the launch license factor is excluded, preparations for both the rocket and its ground support system also could not be completed in just a few months, as he said. Anyway, entrepreneurs by nature are very optimistic about their ventures, else they wouldn't be doing it. Nevertheless, there is a truth that the more professional the Starship team is, the closer Elon's prediction will be to reality. Let me show you. According to the spokesperson of SpaceX, Jessica Jensen, hardware for Starship Flight 3 will be ready in January, and the company expects to receive an FAA license in February and shortly after that. We have liftoff. With a fairly clean stage zero and the positive results after Flight 2 combined with the recent positive updates in Starbase, I'm pretty sure that this timeline is possible. Three major factors play here, the license, the launch vehicle itself, and the ground system that supports the launch. Beginning with the launch license, there is good news for you. The FAA is on pace to issue a Starship launch license mid to late February. The fact that the FAA urgently issued a license for Starship's third launch proves that the current situation is going smoothly, or at least the space company is no longer under pressure like before flight number two. Backflight one, the consequences of the explosion on OLM were far beyond what we could have unforeseen and led series of investigations ensues. In addition to undergoing the FAA's mishap investigation and complying with 63 corrective actions, SpaceX also had to wait for an investigation by FWS on an updated biological assessment under the Endangered Species Act. Given that, the FWSE's assessment centered on the potential impacts of a water deluge system, which SpaceX installed beneath Starbase's orbital launch mount after the April test flight. Up to now, the new system is still working very well, with no significant damage at stage zero after the November test, meaning no major changes to the launch pad. As a result, the FWS won't need to reassess, and this saves a lot of time. Another sensitive problem that made last year's situation more complicated was the environmental groups. A coalition of environmental groups sued the FAA, claiming the agency didn't fully analyze the environmental damage that SpaceX's huge Starship vehicle could cause to sensitive lands. Is surrounded by state parks, national wildlife refugee lands, and important habitat for imperiled wildlife. Fast forward to this year, SpaceX continues to face another lawsuit from environmental groups related to the company's beach closures. Since the commercial space company began building and testing its Starship rocket there in 2019, its ability to shut off access to the pristine stretch of public coastline, which is guaranteed by the state constitution, has won the support of local and state officials and some courts. However, the environmentalists were unhappy with that decision, leading to the 2021 lawsuit targeting Elon Musk's company. Finally, they won in SpaceX. However, this is not much of a concern because SpaceX has become familiar with these local groups' displeasure for years. So, they definitely have a backup plan for themselves. Even if that unexpected incident affects SpaceX's timeline, it will not be much because currently, in terms of hardware, SpaceX is making final preparations. Next, before going any further, if you found this information useful, remember to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. And now, let's go back to today's episode. Among them, the pair of Ship 28 and Booster 10 catch the public's eye the most. 
Ship 28 has been stationed at the engine installation stand, where a Raptor vacuum engine was removed from the spacecraft on the morning of February 2. This is considered just an additional step to launch readiness, so we do not need to worry too much. Booster 10 reinstalled the hot staging ring, signaling the soon rollout of this super heavy booster back to the launch site. Once both prototypes are fully stacked, the only remaining step is the wet dress rehearsal, which is the last major test for a spacecraft before it's officially ready for flight. This puts the entire craft through each step of a simulated launch, exposing it to the super chilled fuels to ensure that everything will function properly on launch day. The next up is to obtain the modified launch license and launch. According to the plan, SpaceX seems to be aiming for a launch on the Valentine, so we should see the full stack on the launch pad roughly a week from now. Now let's move on to stage zero. Looking at the updated photos, it's hard to imagine that the area was once filled with concrete blocks scattered everywhere. Recently, there have been some signs that work on OLM is nearing completion. On January 24, the media recorded images of a new concrete wall being installed between the orbital launch pad and the orbital tank farm. This replaces the previous HESCO barrier, which is primarily used by the United States military for the purpose of protecting against war bomb blasts. However, it was completely obliterated by the powerful blast from the Super Heavy Booster 7 in April last year. After the last liftoff, some cracks appeared on the mount's legs and this part, along with the entire OLM, also suffered the hard static fire test at the end of last year. So on January 26, the legs were given a new coat of paint to give them a perfect look. It means that the work there is finished. Moving closer to the tank farm, where modernization works have become the center of attention recently. After removing two tanks on the external side, SpaceX reinforced the remaining tanks with the welded steel beam to prevent the ground support equipment shells from denting even further in the third launch. Let me know in the comments. Not only Booster 10, but the other boosters are also nearing completion. On February 3, SpaceX shared the tweet. Super heavy boosters for the next three flights, with a fourth ready to stack in the Starbase Megabay. The tweet is attached with the picture including boosters 10, 12, 11, and 13. Booster 10, 12, and 11 are the ones on the stands. Booster 11 looks to already have received engines. On both sides, there are two booster 13 tanks with the liquid oxygen tank on the left and the methane tank on the right. With the incredible advancement of Starship today, it is certain that flights 4, 5, and beyond will take place much sooner than we might expect. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.